We will take the first question from Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. Hey, Herbert. Uh, welcome back. Um, I saw that you posted your, your COVID test results uh, the other day, 8 and 0, so congratulations. Um, but I wanted to ask, was there any point, given that your brother had tested positive, that you were worried about uh, it yourself? And have you thought about, you know, the stroke of luck that he contracted it and you didn't? I, I was worried when well, I spent the night in the same room as him, but that was negative and was negative again and again. It kept coming negative. So after that time, no, much worse. It's still taking the precautions. I'm not taking for granted, but... I'm. I believe it will be super hard for for me to to get a, a positive test coming. So I'm pretty relaxed about the COVID subject at the moment. And just to follow up, how's he doing in his recovery? He's doing well. He's doing pretty good now. He's a little holiday for the family in Brazil with my daughter, my parents, and my older brother. He's enjoying a little bit. He deserves taking a little rest. He did like few camps in a row, and. Then the COVID came, and now he gets rest. Hope, hopefully, he will be back in action in November, December. Well, good to hear. And, of course, you've got a, a fight to look forward to this weekend. You've said that Daniel Pineda is more dangerous than the champion, and I think a lot of people are going to be surprised by that statement. So can you expand on that just a little? What makes him so dangerous? Daniel Pineda doesn't go to decision. He's not a decision man. He goes there and takes the, he finishes his job. Doesn't let other people dictate his the the results of his fight. He always looking for a finish. He has a good jujitsu, has eighteen submissions, victories, and that's why I think he's dangerous than Volkanov. He still have the knockout power, but he's plus he has the jujitsu. He's not uh, doesn't have a name like recognition as Volkanov does, but he's a super dangerous opponent. So in my views, he's dangerous than the, the champion. He's more dangerous than the champion. He hasn't fought in the uh, UFC recently. He's returning, but he has fought in the promotion before. Were you surprised when you were given his name uh, as your opponent, considering the run that you've been on? I was surprised. No, I can't lie. I wasn't surprised. I was surprised that he wasn't in my radar. I had other guys on my radar, but I'm not a guy that runs for a challenge. I run towards the challenge when they offer the name. I, I didn't even flinch. I just accept the name. I'm, I'm Ready to who wants to be the champion, he cannot choose opponents. And I'm one of those guys, I won't choose my opponents. I'm just gonna go walk through all of them and, and make my line to the top. And last one for me. I mean, this being your second fight in the pandemic, do you think that gives you a bit of an edge just knowing what to expect and having experienced the arena with no crowd? Yes, yeah, see it. It will be my first, my third fight here in the Apex. I'm so far. Two submissions, victories, both in the first round. So hopefully I keep the same thing going. And on the Contender Series, there's barely public there. And on the fight against Dan, I had no public at all. So yeah, I know I would expect. I think this gives me a little advantage. But during the fight, to close the cage, just me and Pineda there. And it will be a war. And I will be victorious. All right. Well, best of luck this Saturday. And we will take our next questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Notima Ecuador. Uh, hi, Herbert. Uh, you have already fought under distance court circumstances. Which has been different in this camp compared to the previous one? Uh, I fought before in the pandemic. It's different because there's no public. There's no the energy from people around you. They, uh, they want you to go there and, and perform. They want you to, to feel the energy. That's, that's the most different, I feel. But with public, no public, my goal is the same. Go there and get and perform good and get a good victory. And that's what I'm aiming to do on August 15 against Daniel Pineda. Okay. Uh, your opponent is arguably more experienced than you. What do you think his strategy will be? Do you think he's going to try the keep uh, on the feet or he might go to the ground with you? I think he, he believes in his own skills. I think he will try to... To, to take the fight where he thinks he will win. I believe he, uh, in my eyes, he will keep the fight on the feet. But I won't be surprised if he tries to take me down and try to grapple with me. But if he does that, he'll be welcome. It will be my world. Hey, fair play. Good luck on Saturday here. Thank you. 
And we will take our next questions from Gavin Porter with UFC.com. All right. So it's been about a year since you got your contender spot, just over a year, actually, since you got your contender contract. Is this where you thought you would be in just a year since that day? That was my plan, but um, the, name, the plan, but you never know if the plan is going to go through or not. But he went through, it was true. Great victories, both first round finishes, one knockout, one submission to show my skills and show my potential. And now I'm on the pay per view card again, this time on the main card in the main string. So I'm hopefully looking looking forward there to go there, perform again, and hopefully get one more victory. This will be your third fight this year. And when you look at that, is this the type of activity do you think the pandemic has allowed you to be able to create more value for your identity, for your fighter? Uh, I think so. I think the pandemic is always an opportunity. Man. In times of crisis, it's an opportunity. Some people make true and take, make good of the opportunity. Some people just pass and wait for the perfect opportunity. I, I can't wait. I'm 32 years old. I'm very experienced. I, I did well in other promotions and got my chance to get in the UFC. It was super hard to be here. It wasn't easy for me, but I, I make it here and I show him my potential. And I don't have to, I don't want to waste any time. I want to go there, fight, stay, stay active, show my availability to the company that they can count on me and show notice fights, my second short notes in a row. And I want to go there this Saturday and put a, a hell of a performance again. If you get a third finish in a row, three in a row in the UFC, do you feel like you're setting yourself up to be right where you want to be going into 2021? Yes, yes, definitely. I think if this victory over Pineda, super tough opponents, I, I should be inside of the featherweight rankings. Perfect. That's it for me, Christoph. Perfect. Thank you so much, Herbert. Those are all the questions we had for you. All right. Thank you.